All right. Four o'clock in Birmingham. It's time for the real estate happy hour. And we are back again. You knew we would be. Hey, don't worry. Man, we're, I mean, we're an internet sensation. Absolutely. So how, I mean, how can we, how can we let our, our tremendous fan base down? No, we can't. I mean, just like Bob Marley didn't let them down, we can't let ours down either. We got a better, better following than uh, a rainy day at a golf tournament. That's right. Big golf tournament. The region's tradition. Big. It's one of the four majors on the Senior PGA Tour is about a mile away from here. It's going on right now. Yeah. Well, when it's I, probably not much going on right now. No, I bet they're in a rain delay. Yeah. It's probably, um, just, uh, probably just some beverages being had. A lot of beverages. I went out there yesterday to the Pro-Am and had a good time watching some of the celebrities and uh, golf. I was surprised. I saw the uh, lead singer of Widespread Panic playing with Taylor Hicks. Really? Uh, he was out there. Uh, Clay Travis. Uh, let's say Bo Jackson. You know, everybody was out there. But, of course, Nick Saban wasn't out there because he was uh, rehabbing that. Oh, the hip. Uh, hip. But he was there. So. Well, that's good, man. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully they'll have some decent weather this weekend. But right now it's not looking so good. Probably not much playing in the last few hours. I don't think so. But, uh, oh, funny thing is there's a local agent here, named Karen Charles, who works with us. And uh, I thought about it. She was talking about a game to play when she gets her family together, and I told her that, like, you would be petrified. What's you know, that? It's called exploding kittens. No. Nobody <laughs> wants an exploding kitten. That's what we figured. You'd be really upset. Yeah. So I mean, tell us about it. What's the, I have what's no idea, deal? but oh. I, I just heard the name exploding kittens. Yeah. I know. Because in case you didn't know, he's, uh, I was going to say something else. He loves uh, cats. We, got, we, have, we have two, and they're beautiful. There they are. And you love them. Tell your dad hello. Hey, buddy. And Miss Carrie. Joining. Thanks for um, joining but anyway, but uh, yeah, so you love your cats, as we always say, right? Oh, of course, yeah. You love them better than dogs. Uh, well, I mean, I got one that, that's but it's my favorite right now, so. Well, now, what's your cat's name? Moby. Moby. And Reese. And Reese. For those playing along at home. Yeah. Uh, but he does love them, so. Uh, yeah. He claims that they love him, but, you know, I, we had that story earlier yeah. this year where I, I told him, I had to tell him that, you know, there was a story that came out and said that, you know, cats would actually try to kill you if they could. Like, they really don't love you. That's uh, all speculation. Yeah, speculation. But anyway, uh, hey, had a story this week regarding real estate. It, it was really interesting. I get, here was a situation. I get a, a inspe I'm the listing agent. I get a request for repairs from a selling agent. And she says, I mean, she's calling me. Oh, this is serious. It needs a new roof. The house needs a roof. All right. I know the roof is a little old, you know, but. Hey, ne never a leak, nothing. N no issues that they've had. So anyway, I, I, I went ahead and forwarded onto a roofer. Anytime your agent needs to be forwarded onto the experts, if, if you're the listing agent, forward it onto an expert if you don't know everything know everything about, the th about that particular trade, if you will. So, hey, I'm not a roofer. So I forwarded it onto a, ro a roofing buddy. Uh, and he emails me or calls me right back and says, hey, man, uh, did you, you did read the, report didn't you and i said well i just forwarded on to you let me take a look while you're looking at it and i look at it now remember they have said this roof is in the worst thing ever right i read the report and it says roof condition good uh flashing on roof good now they had categories good satisfactory unsatisfactory and just flat out awful or whatever right flat out awful so i call the agent say hey what in the world? You can't, you come here asking for a new roof. Did you look at the thing? Well, no, I, I, all I did was read the summary and my, and then my clients told me what to do. And I was thinking, what in the world are we doing where we're, we're asking for stuff that's all serious. And then comes down to the fact that the buyers of this property had gotten taken for a new roof on their property. So you know what their reaction was? I'm going to get a new roof on my new house, even though it doesn't need it, right? The point of this story is make sure you read. I mean, this is just ridiculous, right? And you see it all the time with these agents that some of them are just lazy. That's something. I mean, I don't know what to say there, but I mean, I'm just saying it's just amazing. Sounds like nobody was reading the report. That's right. I mean, hey, 
But anyway, so we got that all straightened out. But anyway, tell me about interest rates this week. Interest rates right now, just uh, a tick down, not not much change. 30-year fix, 4.1%. 15-year, 3.57%. Wow, There's not low. much change uh, over the last, last couple of days. But uh, over the last couple of months, they have been uh, trickling down. Uh, funny thing, funny story this week, I, I did have a client that uh, hadn't talked to in a while, and he was comparing my quote from two months ago to a new quote that he got from another lender. Guys, look, if you're shopping for a mortgage, rates move all the time. Hold okay? on, so hold on. Let's go back so everybody understands what happened. Two months ago, this is, what is this, May? May. So we were going before yeah, spring middle, break. Middle of March we, you know, was my estimate, and then he's comparing it to, so he ended up going with another lender because he thought he was saving some money. When the <laughs> only thing that happened was rates changed. Rates went down, and so he... he Thought the quote was better. Of course it was better because, you know. Stuff got better. Yeah. That's like looking at, at the price of a stock two months ago and today. You're like, well, which one over yeah. the side? You mean it's lower today? Yeah. So, listen, tip for you you guys uh, playing at home. If you want to shop the mortgage, make sure you compare on on the same day, you know, interest or call rates it, and estimates. One thing you can do is just call them and say, hey, man. I know you got everything. I know the conditions in your letter that you got two months ago, but you would have gladly given them a updated interest rate, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that is a big one. And and they cost themselves potentially uh, the ability to close easily because, and look, we're not an informer. We're about talking about real estate in general. We're not here to push either one of us. But I will say best, best ability to close in town is you guys. Oh, we're, we, yeah, I mean... We are the best. The numbers show it, um, and, you know. So yeah, we're not. We we'll, won't we'll stay on that too long. But <laughs> anyway, next thing: benefits of a twenty percent down payment, right? Well, everybody talks about it all the time, right? I mean, it's shoved down your throat by your grandparents. You got to have twenty percent down, or they're not giving you a loan, which is not true. But that's what they say. Yeah. But there are some real benefits that you guys, uh, well, you being the industry. Give them. Yeah, there are some real benefits. Now, this this first one is funny because, you know, when I was looking through it, when you sent this over to me, your interest rate will be lower. That is actually not the case. Um, it's funny that in the last year or two, uh, interest rates have gotten a little bit better with mortgage insurance. At 15, 10% 10 down, 15% down, the loans have mortgage insurance. So what does that mean? That means if there's a default, then the lender has somebody else taking part of the the loss. So, okay. so what you're saying, it, that 95% that loan, is the main difference not interest rate in as much as it is that PMI that's being paid? If I'm getting a 95% loan? There's some times where you will actually get a better rate on a 95% loan than an 80% loan. And so I'll make up some of that difference with a PMI. Correct? Who's making up difference? Uh, in other words, in other words, uh, the interest rate's the same, uh, but I have to now add on PMI. So if it was, well, you're saying that the the I'm interest, just about interest rate, just interest, just straight rate. up interest okay. rate. At 95 percent, yeah, you're paying mortgage insurance. At 80 percent, you're not. But if your rate is 4.25 on the 95 and 4.375 on the 80, yeah, that, why wouldn't your rate, I do that? Then your rate's a little bit better. Now, all right, but, but I mean, I'm just I'm just telling you that you know sometimes. The pricing models favor the loans with, with gotcha. mortgage insurance on there. So, anyway, uh, next one is you'll end up paying less for your home, right? Yeah. Because true, you know, if you have the mortgage insurance over time, you're going to pay more for the house. Uh, and I'm going to pay more interest. Yes. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, makes sense to because me. Because you're paying interest on a, a larger amount. Tell us real quick, because I've always found it fascinating. It's funny what I find fascinating. Uh, but you've been a real proponent of saying it's 20% down or it's 5% generally, or whatever you're comfortable with, obviously. But you you believe that the consumer is better off holding their own money than giving it to the lender or to the transaction, essentially. Mm -hmm. is that Do you still maintain that? That, that uh, in other words, you're not going to make much of a difference if you go 5 to 10 or 10 to 15, you might as well just go on to 20, or you should go back to that five in many cases. Well, it just depends on your situation, like how much cash you have available, how much other savings, do you have an emergency fund, do you have any retirement savings, things like that. So it really depends on that kind of stuff uh, as to whether or not 
you should go 5, 10, 15, 20% down. What if, what if I have the money? Let's, let's say I was buying a $400,000 house and I got more than $100,000 to put down. I would need to put 20% down. I need, 80. what, 80000 Is there any reason for me, if I have 140 available, for me not to put the 20 down? Is there any financial reason to, to go 5, 10 instead? Not really. I mean, if you've got that much cash to put down and you've got other savings, you've got an emergency fund and things like that, then you're going to save on the expenses of mortgage insurance. So yeah, I would I would probably go ahead and put the 20% down. Now, sometimes 25% down will get you a better interest rate. So some people look at that. Ah, but uh, That's a nugget. Yeah. So, so, so that definitely just depends on your situation. Well, moving on to the third point here, which is your offer will stand out in a competitive market. Big time, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, I guess, sellers will look over uh, the different offers. Now, I think this this would really come into play with a 20% down conventional loan over an FHA loan. Yes. You know, they probably obviously. probably would rather take that one. In, in a multi-offer situation, I mean, we do look at that. Well, yeah. we go, all right, because all things are going to be equal on a lot of these. And you go, hold on a minute. This person can only afford 10% down. This person has cash available to them that can put 20% down. If there was, if they're teetering on which one to take, it, it's just the one thing that could tip the scale. Yeah, it's just, it's just a little bit more solid financial footing for some people with 20% down, obviously, over a, a lower down payment. All right, number four, you won't have to pay PMI. Yeah, private mortgage insurance. Obviously, we talked about this in a couple other scenarios earlier, but um, if you if you have more than 20% down, you don't have to pay the mortgage insurance either. You know, we're doing a lot of different things with mortgage insurance now, like uh, lender paid mortgage insurance, which we just build it into the interest rate, finance mortgage insurance, where you have a single premium where you just put a little bit more down and finance the rest instead of paying monthly. So Now, was that lender paid mortgage insurance if I remember you saying this correctly, we were better off on that lender MI. The lower the rates, interest rates are, the better you're going to be doing that, right? Because you're just, to make up for it, y'all are going to bump the rate. Yeah, we just bump the rate to pay for it. Usually better credit scores make better sense. Okay. Because the mortgage, all your mortgage insurance rates are based on your credit score. Interesting. See? So. Uh, now, talk about PMI in terms of uh, what's the rule on dropping off there, are they gonna? They're gonna. The seventy-eight percent loan to value is based on initially the original appraisal, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, your original purchase price. Purchase price. Okay. They're gonna base all that off of, the automatic cancellation is based off a of purchase price. Um, you it, can you can ask for it to be reviewed uh, with a new value, but they're probably gonna have to get an appraisal. Now, if you go through the whole refinance process then definitely you can use the new Oh, so if you go value. through it and then you don't do it, but you still have the appraisal, we're good. Yeah, but if you just feel like your house went up in value and you want to contact your bank and say, I want to ask for this to be removed and they have to get an appraisal, then that, you know, that might be a little different situation. But automatic cancellation will go off of your purchase price. All right, this was a question I would have as a consumer, though. If... You so I mean almost every lend mortgage lender out there is selling to about six different banks. In your you start getting service by Bank of America, BB and T, Wells Fargo, those types. Yes. Should they call you at that moment, even though y'all aren't necessarily serving? Can you have any influence over that? Influence over who's so over servicing well not the servicing loan? no over over that twenty percent over going through. Can you help them navigate through? whether or not they have the 78% to drop the MMI? No, because that is going to be, obviously the automatic cancellation is a simple, simple formula, right? You're going off purchase price. There's no, uh, there's no intervening there's no factor. Objective, you know, there's no subjective or objective. Cause you've uh, paid it down. Yeah. Because there's there, there's a purchase price and there's your your current balance. Okay, that's, that's all that's involved. And so, where do you now, see most people trying to get rid of it in the low eighties? And they're going, oh my gosh. I, well, I'm no. Not... If you want to get a you you want to get that new value. Okay. Right. Which I, I can't influence a new value. So if you want to have a new value considered, then that's gotcha. Well, it may be a good time too for them to call you to say, hey, I know interest rates are down three point five one on a fifteen because. 
you five years ago, you weren't making as much. Now, both of you have really good jobs. You made a lot of money. And they call you and say, hey, what what are my refinance options? Yeah. Because last time I was at four and a half with the MI, it, yeah, would most, that make sense? Yeah, and most refinance options in this market, you want to look at shaving the term. So cutting down, if you've got 27, 26 years left, you want to cut down to 20 or 15 or something like that. I'm, I, I've told you this before. You blessed our family when you gave us that advice. Yeah. And I'm not great. kidding. Yeah. Uh, Forty five thousand dollars or something like that over the time and that i'm telling you i'm in the business every day had he not given us that advice we would not have the ability next yeah, move the, the equity position would be yeah different. yeah because what do we do he brought it to me because that's what he does with his clients and what you said to me was because i wasn't even on my radar what on my radar just like it's not on yours because life's going on i'll do that next week yeah. Right. And so, so many times you, you hear that because we hear it in some other industries, but if your mortgage guy, cause they have so much going on now, but if they're calling you saying, Hey, I reviewed the file and I think this may help us. You may want to listen because here's the thing. When we did it, he said, now listen, there's going to be a break even point of about 18 months. In other words, there were going to be some extra fees added on. But once we burn past 18 months, the burn rate on the extra, uh, uh, equity was double. Or more. Yeah. The acceleration of the, of the payments. The, the I mean, extra it snowballed. Principal payment. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That's a good deal. But, you know, you got to look at each situation. Um, you got to look at each person's situation and see what, they, what they're what they doing currently to see if it makes sense. Right. So, uh, and if, just a reminder, anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, we went from a 30 to a 20. Then he says, hold on a minute, gone down again. And we went to a 15. So... Each time, we stayed at the same exact payment. And quite frankly, you could probably see that over the last, not that you would refinance after we've seen these rates go down, but you would have seen a similar drop as we keep coming down. Because remember, you could have been at close to 5% on a 30, but remember what he said, that would be at a certain point last November. But now, if you could afford to get into the 15 at three and a half, that's a point and a half yeah. difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Next is uh, 10 Habits of Successful Real Estate Investors. Yeah, you and I both know there are good and bad. What got people in trouble, I guess, what, in the last 08 boot, uh, bust, if you will, uh, was bad habits. Yeah. And one thing is... Uh, well, I mean, it, it, plus people just getting too excited and, and pulling in too many properties and just, you know, just absolute euphoria, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so the first one is the obvious one. Hey, Tammy, good to see you. All right, now we can get started. All right, hey, we've been waiting here for it. Real Estate Happy Hour is on, on the air. Thursday. <laughs> We're going. Yeah, here we go. Uh, but make a plan. So many investors, oh, I want that house, because I'm going to be, like, I was watching TV at midnight, and they said you can make millions selling real estate, or buying and selling real estate. Uh, let's just go do it. Or an infomercial, or uh, one of those yeah. recorded phone calls. Hey, this is Coach Josh. Uh, I mean, these people call me all the time. Hey, this is Coach Josh. Coach Josh. I'll be in Birmingham. Birmingham. I don't know what you're doing, dude. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and when I come, it'll be my friends there. I won't be there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, make a plan. One of the best things you can do is kind of say, hey, here's the outlay of money I have. I, do I have a plan? Do I have a budget? Do I have all those things? And am I ready to do what I'm about to do? And do I understand it? Because if you don't understand it, you got to go to the second thing, which is know the market. Yeah, you got to know the market. Uh, and I hear a lot of people, and Tammy Hallman's one of them, that say, you know, maybe this is not the best time or or it is a great time for real estate investing. You know, so it depends on what's going on now. It depends on the inventory. I mean, are there a lot of great deals out there? I would say right now, maybe not because the inventory is so low and houses are, are you know, people are buyers are aggressive. And no, whether well, here's a problem. And uh, Tammy's here. She can chime in. It the the problem with a lot of these foreclosures that are usually the good investment opportunities, the government Fannie Mae and and HUD they're going to exclude investors from even having the opportunity for what is it two three weeks, which is bad, quite frankly, for the market because an investor is generally going to make the house a lot nicer instead of getting somebody into the foreclosure that could barely afford it that will not improve it. Right, so. Uh, no, but the only the only problem with that though, and I think the the reasoning behind HUD and FHA doing this is the investor concentration in any market is not good. That's true, and that's what really crashed the market. So, 
Um, that's that's probably the reason why they. Have I that get limitation. it. I get it. But still, it, it just drives me bananas. Yeah, uh, Tammy says she's banking on the fall for the good deals. You know, and that makes sense because uh, that's usually a slower time for a lot of buyers, right? So maybe, you know, they won't be as active. And so maybe a little more opportunity for investors to get in there. Well, you know, the next one's, quite frankly, maybe the most important one because while your town or your city, like Birmingham in general, all of our suburbs, is, seems like a large area, uh, the real estate community is fairly small and word gets around. The, then the next uh, suggestion and habit is uh, be honest. And if you start screwing people, you screw the painters, you screw the realtors, you screw it, anybody involved in the transactions, you lie to your lender, look, what's going to happen is not good. The deals aren't going to come to you. Our best ones, the, I mean, our best investors, obviously, they're the first ones we're on the phone with saying, hey, because they're honest. Look, there's nothing wrong with being tough. I l actually like someone that's tough, but honest. Yeah, you, you got to figure out how to make money it is a business but um you, you know i don't know it's it's a repetitive business so if you do things in one transaction to upset a large group of people there's not going to be a whole lot of transactions behind it i would assume and, and the other thing we see is a lot of these i will buy your house ugly houses you know yeah. those type of things one of the things that we see between the good and bad guys around is the the bad ones will go up and tr and not think in the best not that they have to think in the best interest of that seller but if they're not knowledgeable on the situation, don't take advantage of them. Yeah. Because karma's a real witch, and it'll come back on you. Yeah. The next one rhymes with witch. Develop a niche. You like that? Witch, niche? Anyway, uh, yeah. That, that I mean, find an area of town. An, an area, it, a niche in this situation can be anything. Can it be, I buy duplexes. I buy condos. I buy houses in alabaster. Or, or I just love doing a certain type of repair like you know a lot of houses need flooring and paint and i just you know i, I identify those and I, i'm just making stuff up but you know maybe you have a certain special thing about a house that you maybe you do kitchens maybe you do master bathrooms Absolutely. or and uh, that's what that house needs yeah uh encourage referrals let me say this these are where the best ones come is if you're an investor out there get to know every realtor every lender Listen, they hear it just like we do from investors because they're helping finance a lot of this stuff. Uh, anywhere you can possibly get a referral, divorce attorneys. Hey, nobody knows better than yeah, divorce attorneys. And I see it on attorney. Facebook, too. I mean, I see people posting on Facebook and, and talking hey, about it. Hey, anybody know? So that's right. great. Next one is uh, stay educated. Yeah, educate yourself not only in the market, but how the whole process of investing works. We talk about at the end of every show about personal finance. What are you reading? And... You know, uh, like I hear people ask me all the time since I was a tax attorney, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, putting some real estate in an IRA. <laughs> Hold on a minute, right? Because if you're not educated on what you have to do, because it, it, it's a big deal, don't do it, right? So you really got, there's, it's, it's more to it than meets the eye. And just make sure you're educated or the folks advising you're educated on it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, understand the risks Obviously, you need to you need to know what that is. Where that's big biggest place where you can lose money, um, theft. People steal you. You're not there. Are they gonna steal? What what happens when they steal my? Uh, will insurance cover me if they steal my HVAC system? Yeah, it's, my it's great. I love I love hearing uh, problems with with businesses. I, I was talking to a, a you client. Um, just just the nuances of, of oh, there businesses. You, yeah. you know, weird things like he he bought a uh, cleaning company and. Um, he was telling me that they, they turn over their whole staff. They only have a staff of like 15 people, but they turn over the whole staff in two months. And it costs 500 bucks, on average, 500 bucks a person to train them. You are kidding. Really? It's funny. And he had one that... to tra Hold on. Did you say to train each one? Yeah. Oh, my. To train each one. That's three grand. And then... Uh, you know, I mean, that's fat. Yeah. You, you must learn so you can earn. That's right. Yeah, but, you know, he had one that um, filed... Workers' comp. Oh, and they, they had like 13 cases of workers' comp. They were professional workers' comp filers. Hey, I'm going to join you so I and, can file. And, and they, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. But I, I just think those kind of details about a business are interesting, which is the same thing here. You understand the risks. You're going to learn them if you get in the business, right? You're going to learn them. So this is where having a fantastic insurance agent that you can trust 
to because you look a lot of the insurance agents haven't been in the business for long or they haven't seen the negative side what you're just talking about you find fascinating is the the good and the bad that goes with business you need an insurance agent that's seen it because they don't oftentimes it takes years because you buy a policy before you start seeing problems right, right. and there's no better way to learn than problems happening to your folks but now the next one is invest in an accountant let me say the taxes change your first couple of years with investment property Get to an accountant to do your taxes in those years because there's something called a cost basis. There's all these things that roll into it. Make sure the, the value will be there no matter what it costs. Absolutely. Next thing is, uh, or the last two is find help and build a network. Yep, same thing, right? Uh, who's going to be my painter? Now, not only who's going to be my painter, who's going to be my backup painter? Because he may be busy. Believe me, we got a lot of labor right now that's busy. And right, who, and who's gonna who's gonna see a house, an opportunity, and think about me? You know, that's your network, right? Well, think about it. Those electricians, they're in the houses, working on them, getting them ready, help people getting ready. The home inspectors, those type of people. Quite frankly, some of the best investors in Birmingham, some of them are home inspectors. Why? Because they're going in these houses. They may know that a particular community, the builder originally built a good house, right? So. You just never know where that network is going to come from. So those are 10 habits of successful real estate investors. Yeah, and so the last thing we want to do today is talk a little bit of personal finance. Uh, I found an article on five ways to start investing, which is, uh, you know, a lot of people put this off. A lot of younger people may struggle with figuring this out. So I just want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, it is so easy, um, you know, even as little as 50 bucks a month. But the key is to just start. The key is to uh, develop good habits, uh, regularly putting money away, things like that. So here's here's five ways to start investing. One of them is the cookie jar approach. Wow. Well, All right. Hey, it sounds right. easy. Yeah, just squirreling away cash. You, you know, people you know, save up change and things like that, but just squirreling away cash and figuring out how to how to let that accumulate. Right. Well, the best example. Have you ever watched those people that I, you know I had a friend one time that threw quarters, pennies, all this in this big jug. And I laughed at first, and like three years later, I went back. This darn thing was full. Yeah. And he, all he was doing was every day coming in apparently and just throwing whatever he lose change. Yeah. And you know, my initial reaction is, man, he can't make much money doing that, save much money. But I guarantee you, he did because over time, now he didn't get interest on it. Right. And that's one thing is that some of these online banks have you know a two plus percent. APY on savings, which is not awesome, but hey, it's uh, guaranteed. Uh, next one is getting a robo advisor. Okay, yeah, you you talked about this. We we had a discussion with uh, a mutual acquaintance this week about personal finance, and you mentioned this, and I thought it was a great. Yeah, and there's there's some robo advisors that you can put money with. Uh, you need to look into these, see what their minimums are, but they can, you know, you can kind of cater a portfolio. And they will manage it for you. They'll, you know, be in and out of trades based on their decisions. It's just you put you your money there. Away. There's a human behind it setting the parameters, but the computer is going to try its darn best to keep your guidelines in check. How much? What percentage weight of bonds to equities to cash? Yeah, uh, a few of these is Wealthfront, M1 Finance, Betterment. Uh, Swell is very interesting. Swell is a socially responsible. They sponsored investor. by AOC. I don't know. They've got a fifty dollar minimum and no oil, no oil, tobacco, weapons, or private prisons. They don't invest in any of that stuff. Interesting, man. Yeah, they ruin all the fun. Yeah. Uh, no, hold on, hold on. But you notice weeds not in there. No, they probably MJ. Yeah, they might. Yeah. Uh, number three is your employer's retirement plan. Okay, you can you can. Uh, just set off, you know, one to three percent, and, and sometimes your employer will will match this. But just think about missing one percent; you're not going to notice that it's gone. No, no. I told everybody last week that we that when Amanda and I switched to ten percent from whatever we're six percent, seven percent, we didn't notice the difference, folks, because we weren't seeing the money, and it I never knew it existed. It's all psychology in this process, I think. Don't you? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Although, although tui from what I hear, tuition bills at college is not just thinking it. It's real. Yeah, that, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> number so. number four, which I, I don't really love this one because it doesn't give you a, a lot of details on what to do, but low initial investment mutual funds. 
you know, you got to do some of your own research right there. But 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 here, I my guess is the three big discounters, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, are going to be your places to search these out. Yeah, Wouldn't absolutely. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. Number five is Treasury Securities. Uh, with Treasury Direct, I'm not sure what this is. I, I'm not familiar with it. It's probably more of a conservative investment that I'm interested in, but it's fixed income government securities. So I mean, you sound like you, the savings bonds in the old days. Yeah. I yeah. remember getting those, and you'd be like, what in the world am I going to do with this? Yeah, it's guaranteed income, but... You mean I'm going to have to wait? Yeah, absolutely. That's ridiculous. Well, uh, there's my mom. She's on her way to Copenhagen. Bon voyage uh, up there in the, what do you call it, Norwegian area? Yes. The fjords. Uh, they're going fjords. to St. Petersburg and... They own the high dollar cruise lines. They like tr tr cruising different than you and me. Excellent. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. We we go with the people. Yeah. We like being with them. But anyway, we will see you next Thursday. Don't forget about the podcast. It's huge. It's everywhere you can find great pod. That's right. Pod. P-O-D. Anyway, uh, Google uh, Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, all that great stuff. So anyway, uh, hope you all have a great week. Yep. Y'all have a good time. We'll see you Thursday. All right. See y'all later. War Eagle.